Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the idea of deflating a matrix to reduce one of the eigenvalues to an arbitrary value which you wish. So this is deflation of eigenvalues. Okay. And so here's the idea. The idea is that let's suppose, suppose that A has eigenvalue lambda, and you wish to take this eigenvalue of lambda, which may be the largest eigenvalue, and zero it out. And you wish to deflate or reduce lambda. Okay, so here's the procedure. You find, you pick, so suppose there, we now know that A V is equal to lambda v for some v non-zero, for some eigenvector v. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a vector b, find a vector b, such that v dot b is equal to beta, okay? Where beta is any arbitrary number, so for any beta you wish. Beta, okay? And then what I want to do is I want to construct this. Of course, we're assuming here that V is a what? We're assuming that V is a n row by one column. So it's an n by one vector over here, right? And so, of course, I can write this thing over here really as what? I can write this as V transpose B, right? In other words, this is equivalent to saying that V transpose, of course, V transpose is a what? It's one by n. And then B is an n by one will be equal to beta, okay? Great. And so now what we're going to do is the following. What we're going to do is we're going to construct, construct a vector, construct a new matrix B to be the matrix A minus what? Minus, um, minus this vector B minus V. So now V is n by 1. And then I'm going to put a B transpose, right? B transpose like that. Okay, and so now what's VB transpose? Well, if B is also n by 1, like so, then B transpose is 1 by n, and so this is going to be an n by n projection matrix, right? So what this thing is doing over here is it's projecting into the direction of V, okay? So this is a projection into the direction of V, right? And so now what can we say from this, right? So this is a projection operator, right? So the projection, so it's a rank 1 thing. So I'm doing a rank one perturbation of the matrix A, right? And so typically, perturbations of a matrix will alter the spectrum significantly. However, there are special rules for rank one perturbations of matrices, which will show the structures preserved on some of these in certain circumstances, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at, to look at B of V. Well, B of V is going to be what? It's going to be A of V, right? And then minus V and then B transpose of what? And then B transpose of V, right? And so now, of course, AV is lambda V, and now B transpose V, by assumption, is beta, right? So this is going to be beta V, and so that's lambda minus beta V, right? And so what this tells me over here is this tells me that lambda minus beta, lambda minus beta, is in the spectrum of this new matrix B, which is a rank one perturbation of A, okay? Great. Now let me let, so let, let's let mu be any other eigenvalue of A. Okay? If that's any other eigenvalue of A, that says that A of W is mu W for some non-zero W, okay? Then I claim that mu is also in the spectrum of B. We claim that mu is in the spectrum of B. Okay? So how are we going to prove that? Well, I'm going to consider a vector W, consider W plus some parameter C times V, right? So this is going to be a family of vectors over here. That's a family of vectors. And I'm going to plug this family of vectors into B, right? And so let's see what happens when we plug these into B. Okay? 
So what's going to happen if we do so? We're going to have B of W plus C V, right? So this is going to be B of W. Well, this is going to be really be A of W plus C V, right? And then B is a perturbation. This is going to be minus V B transpose applied to W plus C V, like that, okay? And so if we simplify this, what's going to happen over here? So this A W is going to be mu W because it's an eigenvalue. Then I'm going to have C A V. So that's going to be C times lambda V, like that. That's great. And then what? And then over here, we're going to have minus V, minus V, B dot W, B dot W. And then a minus, over here, we're going to have a B dot V, but B dot V is beta, right? So this is going to be a minus beta C V, minus beta C V, right? Because V, uh, B dot V is going to be, we know that B dot V over here, B dot V is equal to beta, right? Excellent. And so my goal now is to show that this is equal to some multiple, that this is equal to mu. This is equal to, this is what I want. I want this to be mu times W plus CV. That's what we want to have happen. So now let's write down the top equation over here carefully and see what we get, okay? So what are we going to get over here? We're going to have a, let's look at all of the, uh, all the CVs over here, right? And of course, this is a B dot W. So what do we want to have happen over here? We'd like, let's see what happens over here. So we're going to have mu, and then what do we have over here? So that's great. So we have mu W, and then I want, I, uh, yeah, so we want this to be equal to mu times this thing. So what do we have to have happen? So it has to be the case that this mu w, this mu w over here and this mu w here are going to be perfectly fine. So we really want mu c v, mu c v, to be equal to what? We want mu c v to be a c lambda v, okay? And then a minus v b dot w. And then a minus b c, minus b c. And then what? And then a v. Okay? And we know that v is a non-zero vector, so we just have to gather all the v's on one side of the equation over here and then solve for c, right? So in other words, we have a mu c, then a minus c lambda, then a plus b, a plus b dot w, plus b dot w, and then a minus uh, plus b c, applied to v is equal to the zero vector over here. And since V is not zero, this coefficient has to be zero over here. So then now we can solve for C. So let's figure out what the C has to be. So in other words, this tells me that C times mu minus lambda minus lambda, that's also the vector of C. And then a plus beta, plus beta over here, has to be equal to the what? Has to be equal to negative BW over here. So this is negative BW, B dot W. And therefore, C is what? And therefore, if we choose C to be B dot W over the negative of this thing, so lambda minus beta minus mu, then for this choice of C, we will conclude that this B of W plus CV is equal to mu of W plus CV. So that shows that mu is what? That shows that mu is in the that shows that mu is in the spectrum of B, and so that says the spectrum of B is all of the spectrum of A with the only modification that the lambda eigenvalue is going to be changed to lambda minus B. So I'm going to be able to take any eigenvalue I wish, which is typically the largest eigenvalue, and zero it out by choosing beta to be equal to lambda. And in this case, you're going to have a very simple formula for this value of C. And in that case, all the other eigenvalues are preserved, and you can take the largest value eigenvalue and zero it out, and then the second largest eigenvalue becomes the largest eigenvalue. You can do this, this process iteratively. Thank you very much.